And democracy is hard to come by in North Africa. Tunisia is the sole exception. The Arab Spring, the demand of the Arab masses for democracy, began in Tunisia and succeeded here while sputtering out elsewhere. How did this happen? Beyond Daniel Epagani spoke exclusively to Abdes Sattar Ben Musa of the Tunisian Human Rights League and why did Bouchamoui of the Industry Confederation both played influential roles in the National Quarter for Dialogue which brought together politicians and civil society to ensure democracy got a chance in Tunisia. Why did the Arab Spring succeed in Tunisia and fail everywhere else? Why has democracy been snuffed out in so many Arab countries, even though many of the strongmen rulers were swept out? On the 8th anniversary of that democratic revolution, Syria remains mired in civil war, while it's not clear who's running the show in Libya. Iraq is stumbling in its endeavours to grasp democracy, while Egypt is going through the motions of democracy, electing a military general who is the sole candidate and who, no matter how many votes he gets, will be declared the winner. Tunisia's experience was different because labor unions, industry groups, lawyers and human rights activists got together to form the Quartet for National Dialogue to persuade the political parties to talk to each other on the country's political future. <laughs> Based on dialogue and cooperation among political parties, we wrote a new constitution for Tunisia. It was presented to parliament and in 2014, most of the political parties agreed to it. This constitution guarantees freedom of speech and all basic rights for Tunisian citizens. It guaranteed freedom of conscience. It is extremely rare to find a constitution like this in other Arab countries. We also wrote in the constitution that men and women are equal. Our elections were free and held with integrity. We have succeeded in the transition towards a politically stable future. The Quartet for National Dialogue was a strong civil society body and was able to articulate the demands of the people to the politicians. You know, what we did in Tunisia, it was so simple. We chose dialogue. We chose consensus. We chose to listen to each other because we, as Tunisians, we are not used with conflicts. We are not used with arms. We are not, not, we are not used with uh, wars. So for us, it was we got just one solution. How we can save our democracy, how we can save our uh, revolution, uh, we found, as members of the Quartet, that dialogue was the only solution. But the Arab world is not a single entity and every country has its own specificity. Tunisia had some distinct advantages too. In Tunisia, we do not have sectarian divisions between Sunni and Shia. We do not have divided ethnicities. The Tunisian education system is also very good which is why society believes in dialogue. They are well informed and know what happens in the West, since it is geographically close. Women in Tunisia have enjoyed their rights for many years. They now have a place in the constitution and are equal to men. Comparatively, women have no status in neighboring Libya, where society is divided into tribes and civil society is weak. Tunisia managed to pluck the flower of the Arab Spring, but its social fabric was unique in North Africa and West Asia. Today, despite economic stresses and strains and unrest in the streets, Tunisians can be expected to find a way out of their troubles through dialogue and cooperation. With Daniele Pagani in Amman, Bureau Report, Vion.